Scott. Senator Hirono, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To ensure the fitness of uh, all of the nominees who come before any of the committees, I ask the following two foundational questions. Since you became a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harassment or assault of a sexual nature? No, ma'am. Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a treatment, a settlement rather, related to this kind of conduct? No, ma'am. Congratulations, uh, General, on your nomination. And of course, I join my colleagues in thanking uh, General Berger for his uh, years of outstanding service and leadership. I want to ask you about, well, I also join my colleagues in, in expressing our support for 31 amphib ships for you. And we don't, uh, we, we do need to get to why <laughs> after everyone agrees that, that this is a good idea. And uh, Senator Sullivan there led the charge in the latest effort to focus our attention on that, that need for 31 amphibs. So we will continue to pursue uh, that the, in terms of your readiness. The transition of Marines off Okinawa and uh, to more dispersed locations, including to Hawaii, we already have uh, some of the, our uh, Marines in Hawaii, but has been ongoing for a long time. And, and to uh, basically uh, move people out of, our Marines out of Futema, and uh, they, uh, I don't quite know how uh, we are proceeding with uh, building up in, in Henoko, but um, I hope that is proceeding after such a long time. So, meantime, our alliance with Japan has gotten stronger, and a new Marine Littoral Regiment, like the one already in Hawaii, will be stood up in Okinawa. Uh, General, how have the posture cha changes planned under the Defense Policy Review Initiative made the Marine Corps stronger in the Pacific? Thank you, ma'am. That uh, DPRI, as it's known, the, the, the relocation ensures that we have strategic depth across the Pacific from Japan, specifically the southern Ryukus, and then, of course, Iwakuni uh, in the home islands, down through Guam and back to Hawaii. That gives us some depth and reach across the first island chain. And that uh, 12th Marine Latour Regiment that you described, mm -hmm. that was a very significant move uh, we're very grateful for our own State Department and the government of Japan for allowing that to stay when it was de designed to go somewhere else. That is very significant, and I think it speaks to the need for those kind of rapidly deployable long-range fires units. So the uh, ability for the Marine Corps to do its mission in the Pacific, in my view, is uh, predicated on something as basic as a strong infrastructure at our major installations like those in Hawaii and Guam, as well as uh, smaller dispersed locations throughout the region. Yet, as you have testified previously, uh, our infrastructure is not where it needs to be. If confirmed, how will you prioritize the foundational elements of readiness like water and electricity at our installations? Senator, if confirmed, a priority and a, and a deep priority is that infrastructure. Those bases and stations are power projection platforms in a modern fight. They're not simply bases where we live. It's a power projection platform, and the power they're projecting is the people who live on them mm -hmm. and their families. They must be cared for and, and, and retained. And you only do that through quality housing. You do that through child development centers. You do that through water treatment facilities. I'm committed to those if confirmed. Well, the thing is that those are priorities that have been articulated, and yet, uh, when we look at uh, the, the uh, requests, the, the, those priorities are not particularly reflected. So um, one of the um, areas that I'm, I'm very much focusing on in the readiness of committee is our infrastructure, and I will look to you for um, articulation and, and actual funding that will be reflected because we can't have our water pipes uh, leaking and uh, electricity going off in our major hospitals in the Pacific, all of that, and I'm sure you two are familiar with uh, what's going on at Red Hill and the need for billions of dollars to safely remove the, the 100 million gallons of uh, fuel that is there. So I am I'm really looking for the, the uh, a plan, <laughs> particularly for the Indo-Pacific AORR that will reflect a commitment to a strong infrastructure and not constantly wait until things break down for us to pay attention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.